at you from the Mushroom Farm, and I got a great video for you guys today. So today we are going to talk about collecting ASCO spores. This is a multi-ASCO spore plate that I have made from a Cordyceps Militaris fruiting body. So we're going to talk about that, and I'm going to announce the subscriber giveaway winners for the month of December. It is also Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas, everyone! Thank you all for tuning in to the Mushroom Mesa YouTube channel, and thanks everybody who entered the subscriber giveaway. Like I said, we're going to announce those winners in just a moment here, and I want to say if you're new and you're just now tuning into this channel, my name is Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few shots of some of my grows over the years, but I basically grow all these mushrooms here on my farm and I sell them at farmers markets and to high end restaurants. We have over 270 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel. I'm doing daily uploads and monthly subscriber giveaways. So if you're into mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But anyway, on to today's video, the Cordycep Asco Spores, the multi Asco Spore Plate. Also, like I said, I'm gonna announce the subscribe giveaway winner. So we're gonna get into that right now. Sorry if my cat's making a little noise in the background. I guess she's excited because it's Christmas. Okay, so subscriber giveaway winners. And also, sorry I took a little break on the daily uploads. I was, I was really busy. I got tons of orders coming into Christmas and I just wanted to take a little break for a second. We did really good though. We didn't quite get 100 days of daily uploads in a row, but guess what? We're not giving up. We're trying again. The guy that keeps trying, no matter what, we're going to put out more quality content than any other mushroom YouTube channel. So thank you all who have subscribed so far and we're going to keep these daily uploads coming. We're, we're going to keep them starting today. We're going to continue tomorrow. And we're just going to keep knocking on as many daily uploads as we can. We're trying to hit 100. Okay, so we'll see if we can do it. The first winner I'm going to announce, Sean Watkins, 2641. You're my first winner for the subscriber giveaway. And I want to say all of you winners, please just email me. My email is linked down in the description box below. Send me your address, and I'm going to be mailing out all of your culture packages on Monday morning, okay? Um, winner number two. I may say this wrong, okay? So I'm going to spell it too. Solen C, Solen C A or something, 2069. So S O L A N A C E A E 2069. Your winner number two, Chris Anderson. 1498 you are winner number three Merry Christmas Chris uh, congratulations and last but not least winner number four J and TM 2155 so you four are my subscriber giveaway winners thank you guys uh, Merry Christmas to y'all hope you all enjoy these cultures a bunch we're gonna go over these cordyceps asco spores in just a second I've got a bunch of plates here I'm gonna show you guys uh, they turn out really cool We've got some really good growth going on on these but uh, before we get into that, I want to say once again, thank you everybody who entered the subscriber giveaway. And um, we're going to keep these giveaways coming monthly. I am going to do a sale for you guys. My, I have had so many um, sales though that have been made this, this last week leading up into Christmas. We are going to run out of stock, okay? So we're going to wait until January 1st to do the uh, sale for you guys. But I'm going to do a website-wide sale. Everything is going to be on sale from cultures to consultations. I've done quite a few consultations this last year. By the way, I'm going to increase my price on the consultation for 2026 just because my time is super limited. I'm always very busy here and I highly value my time. So it takes a whole lot out of my day when I do things like consultations or have someone come to the farm. So we're gonna increase all the rates on that this upcoming year, but it is what it is. Like I said, we're gonna do the sale though. January 1st, New Year's Day, I'm gonna kick off a week long sale and we're just gonna have everything on sale until we run out of stock, okay, or until the sale ends. But anyway, um, let's get into this video about the Cordyceps Asco Spores. Okay, so I got a few different plates here. I just want to show these to you guys. I'm going to talk to you about some of these grains I've inoculated. These are oyster mushrooms. We'll save that till the end of the video, though. And I'll do a little... I had a few questions just so I noticed some of you guys dropped in the comment section. I'll just do like a short Q&A at the end of this, too. But also, um, the Cordyceps Asco Spore. So here we go. Check it out. So I showed you guys in my video about cultivating Cordyceps Militaris. If you guys have not seen that video, I did kind of my first big... Cordyceps Militaris tray grow here on the farm. Okay, and I've done very small jar grows in the past. I've never actually bred Cordyceps before, okay? So this is going to be my first attempt at actually breeding some Cordyceps and just seeing what kind of results we get. But we have a few different plates here going. I originally got these genetics from Jeff Manganero at Appalachian Gold Fungi, and they were originally bred by single spore isolates, okay? 
And now what I did here, and there's a few different techniques how you can do single spore isolates, but here's what I did, okay? So I basically took a multi-spore sample. This is just like, let's just say, for example, if one of you guys would get like a spore syringe in the mail and you guys were wanting to grow some mushrooms from spores. You know how if you put spores on agar or spores to grain, that is a multi-spore solution that you are inoculating with? That is exactly what I'm doing right here. I am just creating multi-spores on agar basically because I got the fruit body to drop the spores onto the agar. They have the hyphae, the, uh, the monocarions have fused together to form dicarions. And now we are seeing this mycelium kind of grow out here. And we more than likely have dicary dicaryotic cultures here, okay? So I bet these will fruit. There's probably a whole lot of spores on that plate there. I let these sit for a while, okay? And some of these, they're getting some, I wish you guys could really see you can, you can see the depth to that mycelium. Look how thick it is actually getting in there. So it has grown up quite a bit. And I'm just gonna tell you guys how I'm gonna approach this and how I'm gonna go about using these and trying to breed with these. Because like I said, this is the first time I've done this. So this is experimental, but I'm just gonna share it with you guys because I think we're gonna have some really good results. This is how I've created previous strains with like my lion's mane, for instance, my new Samson strain. I basically did a spore swab where I swabbed the actual fruit body of the lion's mane then I streaked the plates, collected the different multi-spores and got the dicaryotic sections growing out on those plates. Anyway, then I just sectioned off that mycelium, put those onto new plates, put those to their own grain jars, and uh, I actually did 100 jars at that time to create the Samson strain. So I selected that one out of 100 different multi-spore inoculations that I did. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take a few sections of this off, okay? I'm gonna put some in slants just to have it, okay? I'm also gonna put some straight into liquid culture and I'm also gonna put some to agar also just to have it and expand it. I'm gonna expose some of these to light. I am, and just see what they do, see if they turn orange. They should turn orange, okay? But, okay, the, the liquid culture that I'm making and the slants that I'm making, I'm gonna keep those in total darkness, okay? Cordyceps is highly photosensitive, so you don't wanna expose it to too much light. I'm just doing it for the video here, and I don't think it's gonna cause any problems. Just showing you guys on camera real quick, you know, just for a little bit, but I feel like if you expose this to light for a while, it starts to turn orange. It wants to like initiate the fruiting. So you wanna keep these, I, I believe personally, like I said, it's my first time doing this with these cordyceps, but I feel like you wanna keep these in darkness the whole time you're working with them until it's time to fruit, basically, okay? So anyway, like I said, I'm taking a section of this multi-spore uh, culture growth that we got going on. I'm gonna put some into LC and I'm gonna put some in slants. Now the, in the LC, I'm just gonna let that grow out, okay? And then it should be ready to use in like one week because Cordyceps liquid culture grows crazy fast, like crazy faster than anything else. So the Cordyceps liquid culture is typically ready in about seven to 10 days. That's like the sweet spot to actually take that culture put it to bulk. So anyway, I'm going to grow out some of this multi-spore culture, put it to bulk. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to order some of these deli containers. I don't know if you guys have seen those 32 ounce one quart deli containers that people use for cordyceps breeding, but I'm going to make a bunch of deli containers and just see what kind of growth I get out of these deli containers. Now I am going to try to clone my best fruit bodies, isolate those, and then see if I can propagate and we can expand those fruit bodies just through cloning. Okay. But I'm also just gonna see if how vigorous these multi-spore inoculations are. They may do really well just doing a multi-spore culture inoculating into bulk and not even actually cloning the genetic, because cordyceps, it senesces very quickly. So I'm not quite sure how it's gonna be when I clone the genetics from the deli container because it's already expanded a lot at that point. But anyway, we're just gonna see what happens, okay? So for science, but this is how I did the Cordyceps multi asco spore collection and it worked really well. Let me just show you some of these plates that I have here. Like I said, here we got one that is growing quite a bit. Got a few more that's going really hard. That's another one. Boom, another good one. I made a lot of these. We got another good one. These these weren't blasting off. Oh, don't drop them. These weren't blasting off as much, but there's some cool stuff to check out here. So I attach the fruit body to the top of the petri dish here with petroleum jelly, but you can actually see on the fruit body, you'll see like little hyphae growing out, like the spores germinating on the fruit body. You'll see the white fuzz mycelium growing from it. So look on the tip there. I'll see if I can get the camp. Yep, right there. Look right there, basically. And yeah, but that's mycelium. 
This one, that's showing up pretty good. See if I can get the camera to focus. Right on the tip there, you guys see that? Pretty cool. Just thought that was pretty, oh this, and this one's doing it quite a bit too. Yesterday, the, it, it would have looked even cooler yesterday. The hyphae were like smaller and it was blasting out more. They're kind of, they're starting to fuse together quite a bit um, now. But yeah, there it is. And like I said, we've got a lot of them here on the agar and I'm gonna section some of that off put some into LC and put some into slants, put some onto more agar. We're gonna run a bunch of tests here and just see what happens with these multi asco spores. And I will get into some single spore isolation in the future, but I just don't wanna get into that just yet because I have a whole lot of things planned for the farm this next upcoming season. And I'm, I'm really gonna double down on my gourmet cultivation this next upcoming year. I'm a hardcore gourmet mushroom farmer and we're gonna grow the most I've ever grown in my life. So we're gonna talk about that. Let's look at this grain spawn. I was showing you guys. Oh, that's not even my golden oyster. That's that's one of them other mushrooms. Here's the golden oyster. Okay, that's funny. So here's the golden oyster, but my golden oyster grain spawn is totally colonized now. This stuff is ready to use. I told you guys it would be just a few days and that golden oyster spawn would be ready to use. So here's that five pound bag we made. Turned out really nice. Real quick little question. I had a guy asking in the comment section before too, just about liquid cultures. I always use, I'll give you guys my recipe if, you, if there's any new viewers tuning in. I make a 4% nutrient solution, 35 grams dextrose, one to two grams light malt extract, one to two grams peptone into 1000 milliliters of water. That's my basic solution that I use uh, for my liquid culture. They were asking if you can use different types of malt. I've personally only used light malt uh, extract or just malt extract. They were asking about dark. It'll probably work. I actually had one guy tell, tell me he made liquid culture using beer one time. So you can make liquid culture out of all sorts of stuff as long as you guys have that 4% nutrient solution. Obviously, certain things work better than others, you know what I mean? But like, I feel like you can use whatever kind of malt to tell you the truth. If like that's your limiting factor, I would just use what you got, see what happens. I mean, worst case scenario, you lose a week of time, you know, but that, that's about it. It could be, be a good little experiment for you. You might learn something. I never have personally done that though. I've always used kind of, like I said, light malt or just malt extract. And that's the malt extract that I use in my liquid cultures. But hopefully that answered your question or anyone else's questions about additives or supplements to your liquid cultures. I had another guy asking too about training cultures like on different grains and substrates. There is evidence that um, the mycelium can start like building up uh, enzymes, I guess, to break down whatever new substrate that is that it's kind of like colonizing. So you can potentially train your mycelium to grow on different things. I don't, okay, what I personally do is I switch my cultures. I do switch my cultures from slants time to time on whatever that growing media is. So sometimes I'll have it on PDA, potato dextrose agar, and sometimes I put it on malt extract agar. And I just switch between MEA and PDA basically and kind of rotate like that. And then honestly, sometimes when I make cultures, sometimes I put peptone in, sometimes I don't, you know what I mean? Just, I'll kind of mix it up here and there, but that's kind of like the extent that what I do it, I don't do it on different grains or anything like that. I pretty much will keep, like I said, different um, agars running, but that's really about it. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that that you want to hear, I'm going to do some more Q&As in the future. We're still going to do a um, like a whiteboard. I'm going to do a whiteboard to show you guys like flow charts on stuff. I think that's going to be cool in the future and stuff like that. We're going to do a whole lot of construction on the farm as winter's going on yet. I just bought um, more. I had one Fenrir auger head and I just bought more yesterday. So I uh, gave myself a little Christmas present. Those should be in. They take a while to ship, so they, it, it'll be a little while before I get those. But I'm gonna start putting together my hopper in the back, start putting together my vacuum loading system. Like I said, I'm gonna enclose the lab here and um, we'll put up a whiteboard somewhere. I'm not sure, exactly sure. I might have to put it on the outside of the lab to tell you the truth, because I want to leave some space on the inside here for um, spawn racks. And like I said, I'm gonna put another vertical flow hood over here. Still gonna keep the flow wall the way it is over here. I may even add another filter over here, who knows. But yeah, I don't know. I got lots of cool plans for the next upcoming year. Lots of great videos for you guys. Um, I just wanna thank everybody that has dropped questions tuned into my videos. Really appreciate all you guys. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. Um, congratulations once again to the subscriber giveaway winners. But that's all I got for you on this one. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I will catch you guys on the next one.